Hi everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. Starting from today, let's learn a very important chapter in pathology that is diseases of heart. This is a series which covers most of the important topics in the diseases of heart and today is the part 1 of ischemic heart disease where we will be looking at the definition the epidemiology of ischemic heart disease, the risk factors, pathogenesis and clinical manifestations of myocardial ischemia. So, by definition, ischemic heart disease means they are actually group of related entities which are resulting from myocardial ischemia. So, when I say myocardial ischemia, it means there is an imbalance between the myocardial supply, which is perfusion, and the cardiac demand for oxygenated blood. So, that's what is referred to as myocardial ischemia. Now, coming to the epidemiology of uh, ischemic heart disease, this is the single largest cause of mortality worldwide, accounting for around 12% of all global deaths. Men are affected more frequently than women usually manifest in ages above 50 years of age and though it manifests in ages above 50 years of age, usually it begins early and then the prevalence increases as we age. Moving on to understanding the various risk factors associated with ischemic heart disease, they are broadly categorized into traditional risk factors and the emerging risk factors. We all know about the traditional risk factors which are further categorized into modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. The non-modifiable risk factors are the ones which we don't have any control over that. For example, you know, male sex, increasing age and when somebody has a family history of premature ischemic heart disease, the modifiable uh, risk factors are the ones which we can really have a control on these factors, particularly the cigarette smoking, hypertension, diabetes mellitus and hypercholesterolemia. These are modifiable risk factors. Moving on to emerging risk factors, we are again subcategorized into the metabolic causes and dietary causes. The metabolic causes include obesity, overweight or elevated body mass index, being inactive for longer duration of time, all these are metabolic risk factors and these are emerging risk factors. And the dietary factors, some of them include consumption of meat and poultry, saturated fat intake, high saturated fat intake, particularly you know the fat in the butt, animal fat in the butter, consumption of increased amount of sugars, all these are dietary risk factors, these are emerging risk factors. And one more important uh, among the emerging risk factors are the associations which are off late, you know, seen to be associated with these ischemic heart disease. And these are inflammatory conditions, particularly the diseases like psoriasis, which is a chronic uh, skin disease, chronic kidney disease, and HIV or AIDS. All these are emerging associations which are basically risk factors for ischemic heart disease. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease can be a risk factor of ischemic heart disease. It's not surprising that these days people are you know, spending lots of time in front of the screens, be it television or smartphone. And this is also an emerging association as emerging risk factors for ischemic heart disease. Psychosocial stress, urban people who are residing in urban population, work-related stress, sleep deprivation and more important prolonged sitting. All these are associations which are found that they are risk factors, indeed risk factors for ischemic heart disease. You can read more about this in this link where it talks about everything about all the risk factors and all you want to know about ischemic heart disease. Now that we know the risk factors, now let us see what actually causes myocardial ischemia. The most important cause being the obstruction and the obstruction is because of the atherosclerotic lesions of or in the epicardial coronary arteries. Okay, So, the more than 90% of the cases, the cause is obstructive atherosclerotic lesions in these coronary arteries. What are these? Epicardial coronary arteries and no wonder it is called as coronary artery diseases. 
no wonder ischemic heart disease is also referred to as coronary heart disease so what do you mean by atherosclerotic lesions and these atherosclerotic lesions i have talked in detail about the pathogenesis and the pathology of atherosclerosis in my earlier videos this atherosclerosis can begin during childhood or adolescent but the manifestation of ihd is very very late okay so ihd or ischemic heart disease is the late manifestation of the atherosclerotic diseases which can begin during childhood or adolescence apart from the atherosclerotic obstruction of the coronary arteries the other causes include emboli coronary emboli it could be myocardial vessel inflammation or could be spasm of these myocardial blood vessels all these constitute to around less than 10% of cases remember more than 90% of the cases are due to epicardial coronary arteries atherosclerotic lesions which can cause obstruction now now that we have atherosclerotic lesion what is the pathogenesis of ischemic heart disease we know that there is insufficient coronary perfusion and that is relative to the myocardial demand which means the heart requires more oxygen for it to survive but then there is insufficient coronary perfusion and the cause is chronic as we mentioned earlier it's because of progressive atherosclerotic narrowing of the epicardial coronary arteries no no we need to understand the concept of stenosis something called critical stenosis when we say critical stenosis it means the obstruction is more than 70% of vascular cross sectional areas okay and this is the one which causes ischemia when it is often precipitated by exercise ischemia precipitated by exercise is found in cases who have critical stenosis now if the obstruction is more than 90% of the vascular cross sectional area then ischemia is a manifestation even at rest any of these vessels can be involved it can involve one vessel it can involve two vessels or it can involve three vessels important vessels which are involved in coronary artery disease or ischemic heart disease are the left anterior descending coronary artery which is basically a branch of left coronary artery and then you have left circumflex circumflex artery right and then you have right coronary artery so this is the right coronary artery arising from the root of the aorta that's the left coronary artery which further divides into left circumflex and left anterior descending artery apart from the chronic causes there is acute cause which result in ischemic heart disease and that is you have a plaque already and then there is sudden change in these plaques and what are the sudden changes the sudden changes can be rupture of the plaque it can be fissure of the plaque it can be ulcer within the plaque or even hemorrhage within the plaque all these can lead to unstable angina all these can lead to you know sudden obstruction or occlusion of the coronary blood vessels leading on to manifestations like unstable angina acute myocardial infarction and even sudden death will consequences of myocardial ischemia that we know that if there is ischemia remember the cell injury and adaptation topic if there is any ischemia there is deprivation of oxygen which leads to reduced atp generation and also reduces the availability of nutrients it reduces the removal of metabolic waste so all the manifestations is because of myocardial ischemia and the clinical manifestations or the consequences of myocardial ischemia can be categorized into one angina pleuris which basically a chest pain myocardial infarction sudden cardiac death and chronic ischemic heart disease first one being angina pectoris where the ischemia is not severe enough to cause infarction infarction meaning death of the particular tissue right so it but it can be a risk for further infarction you know and they can be classified or categorized into stable angina and unstable angina unstable ang angina as we saw early it's due to acute plaque change okay there is some amount of damage involving the plaque whereas in stable angina there is no such plaque damage so myocardial infarction is also due to acute plaque change where there is abrupt occlusion of the coronary blood vessels causing frank cardiac necrosis sudden cardiac death is a very 
catastrophic manifestation which is usually caused by again myocardial ischemia that induces a fatal ventricular arrhythmia okay and that leads to sudden cardiac death now if any of these does not occur then you know chronic ischemic heart disease is a manifestation usually it is accompanied by a heart failure so in this session we learnt about the epidemiology the risk factors the pathogenesis and the clinical manifestations of ischemic heart disease i hope the concepts are clear and in the next part we will start learning in detail about the manifestations particularly the myocardial infarction so stay tuned if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment if you have any queries to ask or if you want any topic to be covered please do mention that in the comment section below if you find this video useful please do subscribe and don't forget to share this among your friends thank you